So you might recall, we first had a look at inverse functions, generally speaking. And then we said, okay, cool, now we know what they are. Let's look at some of the fancy stuff, like the inverse of an increasing function and a decreasing function. The inverse of an odd function. We understood them a little better. We, we sort of dug into it. And we're going to do the same thing here. What do we already know about the inverse trig functions and their graphs? What was the first lesson and what did we cover in that lesson? They look like okay, if we have a look at, yeah, yeah, sort of, yeah, all right, sure. So when you think about the concavity and the shape of these inverse tree graphs, they do share some features. <laughs> we looked at domain and range, and we looked at how to modify the domain and range when we did what to them. What was the second lesson after that? This morning's. What did we do to our graphs? Yeah, we transformed them. Yeah. We um, we reflect. We can translate, and we can scale, like stretch and squash, etc. So now we're going to dig a little bit further and think about what kinds of properties, what kind of interesting things can we notice, like interesting patterns, like the inverse of an increasing function, is increasing that that kind of level of thing. So first, we're going to have a look at this. Now, some of you will have seen this result before, but if you haven't, I'm, I'm going to address it from like never looked at this at all. If we have a think about, just look at this for a second. Okay. Now the whole idea is that, even though it's not exclusively about angles, you can think of this as an angle in a triangle, sine inverse of x. It's an angle, right? If you take sine of an angle, it gives you a ratio. This is taking the ratio and handing back the angle. Okay. So this is an angle, and then this is another angle. What happens when we add these two together? We're going to make two arguments. The first one's like a simple geometric one, it's a bit of a cheat. The second one is a bit more rigorous, and it's based on the graph. Okay. So, remembering that these are about angles, draw for me a triangle. Okay. Now, sine inverse of x, it exists inside a triangle of some kind. It's an angle in a triangle. So, for instance, if I were to say, uh, let's give this thing a name. Let's call this thing, let's call this angle theta. Okay. Got a right angle in this triangle. So if I call this guy over here, theta, what can I say? I can say a variety of things, but what's one thing I could say about the lengths of the sides in my triangle? Do you want to give me any? Okay, good. So this is, remember, it takes a ratio and it hands back an angle. So this is kind of a ratio in disguise. I could say it in a variety of ways, but x over 1 will do. And sine is about which pair of sides? Opposite, the hypotenuse, very good. So if I say this is opposite and this is hypotenuse, how does that look? Does that make sense? Sine inverse of x on one, x on one, that will hand me back theta. So far, so good. Okay, now having a look at this, where's cos inverse of x? Where's that? It's this guy over here, right? It's adjacent on hypotenuse. That's one way I could say it. There's another way I can do this though. Right? There's another way I can do this. Have a look at this other angle over here. What is this angle in this particular triangle? I'm in. I'm in. I could say 90 minus. I'm in inverse tree gland. I've, I've put calculus. I've sort of put it as part of my like brain. So I'm not really going to try and do degrees. I'm going to try and avoid them as much as possible. This is really pi on 2 minus theta, right? This is the complement. Do you agree? Okay. Now, I could say, I could say that cos inverse of x is going to be like, I can phrase it in terms of this guy. What is this guy, by the way? I can find him quite easily. Square root of? Good, that's, that's just straight Pythagoras. But it's a bit messy to go for that guy, right? I would prefer to have a look at the guy in the corner, this guy over here, and say, how are these two angles related? Cos inverse of x is not just adjacent to hypotenuse over here. It's the opposite and hypotenuse of a different angle. Which one? Yeah, it's the opposite and hypotenuse of, um, sorry, the adjacent and hypotenuse of this angle. Do you see that? X over one. There's the X over one. It's the same one there. Right? So therefore, if this is theta, then this angle is this blue guy over here. Do you agree with that? Like, that's the angle it's referring to. Running out of fingers to hold these whiteboard lines. So this guy is pi on 2 take away theta, right? So therefore, if I add an angle to its complement, which after all, that's what cosine means, complement of sine, okay? Therefore, 
this thing should just be pi on 2. Do you agree with that? Like, do you see the way I reasoned it? This is talking about an angle, maybe this one. He's talking about another angle, this guy over here, adjacent on hypotenuse. All right, now this is okay, except the argument only works naturally in an um, acute, a right angle triangle, and therefore it puts a restriction on theta, namely that it must be acute. Okay? I can do a little better than this because sine inverse and cos inverse don't just exist from naught to pi on 2, they exist a bit broader than that. Okay? So instead of appealing to a triangle, I'm going to appeal to a graph, kind of two. So would you draw a set of axes for me, but make it big enough that we can fit not just sine inverse, but sine inverse and cos inverse together. Can you do that for me? One graph. Okay, now what I've left off of this is I have no um, I have no actual values here, right? So I've got my cos inverse graph in green, I've got my sine inverse graph in blue. Where's my domain restriction at the moment? Negative one to one, so I'm gonna slap that guy in there. And including both graphs, what's my range restriction? How far down can I go? Pi to one. Ne yeah, negative pi on two all the way up to pi. And I've got zero and pi on two as stop offs in the middle. Okay, so everything should be nice and evenly spaced out. Now what I'm doing here is I'm saying, okay, well this guy up here. The extension 2 students are very familiar with this, but even extension 1, we can say, look, I'm adding these two together, right? I'm adding them together. Some points are easy and some points are hard. Let's do the easy ones first, okay? For instance, over here, way on the left, right? When x equals negative 1, I know what the sine inverse graph is equal to, and I also know what the cos inverse graph is equal to. Negative pi on 2 plus pi. Negative pi on 2 plus pi? It's pi on 2, right? So I should be up there. Okay, so that is in line with both of these, okay, all the way over at negative one. In the same way, if I move over to x equals zero, that's the next easy point. Okay? At x equals zero, this ordinate, the y value is zero plus pi on two. Man, there he is. Okay. And one last one over here, they swap signs. So here cos inverse is now zero, and sine inverse has come up to pi on two. So you can see I must go through these three black points. In addition to that, when you think about blue plus green, yeah, see how this guy is increasing at exactly the same rate as this guy is decreasing. Do you see that? Right. So there's this symmetry here, and it goes all the way across because this guy's always increasing, and this guy's always decreasing, and they are doing that at exactly the same rate. Okay. So therefore, really, what I've got here is this line, and this line, of course, is y equals pi on two, because we have that intercept right in the middle, which is very easy to see. Okay. Now, this is a nicer argument because it extends the domain, right? It extends the domain, and you can see, look, this is true for more values than just in my, um, my little right angle triangle over there. However, it's not yet complete to really, really make this rigorous, and we'll finish this tomorrow. What I really need to argue is, you know how I said, oh, look, this is increasing at the same rate as this is decreasing. I just kind of said that, I just kind of threw it out on the, on the basis of the awesomeness of my graph. But you don't need that, partly because maybe your graph is not as awesome as mine. What tool do we have to use to prove that one thing is increasing at exactly the same rate? At, yeah, we need to be able to differentiate these things. Okay? Now we've already established how to differentiate sine, cos, and tan. It's a bit of an extra step to do sine inverse, cos inverse, and tan inverse, but we will do that tomorrow. And then this proof will be rigorous. Okay, it's like, yep, without a shadow of a doubt. Not only these three points, which are easy to see, but all the ones in between, we'll be able to know that they, we can prove that they're all equal. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, now this is a really important result. This is a really important result, so put a big box around it. 